Hi, everybody. Tom Van Hoy with this edition of the Pitch State Baseball Insider Show with head coach Matt Murray. Pitch State finished a 10-game homestand Tuesday afternoon against Newman, a 17-3 PSU win. How about 18 hits and two five-run innings along the way? Gorillas finished the homestand at 8-2, and two, including going 3-1 and one against MIAA teams, Northeast Oklahoma and Washburn. So Pitt State right now, 13-13. And 10 and 10 in conference play. This 10 game homestand started back on March 14 with Northeastern State of Oklahoma, and the Gorillas won three or four conference games against Northeast, continued with a 13 8 non conference win over Drury, then three more MIAA wins in four conference games with Washburn. This included Sala starting pitching in game one and game three from Tyler Thompson and Court Lesmeister. Lesmeister, in fact, a two hitter in game two of Saturday's doubleheader a 3-0 pitch date win. Plus, Thompson, a rare relief appearance in the final game of the weekend series with Washburn, pitched three perfect innings. The game, pitch state one, 5-4-13, and 13, on a wild pitch during an intentional walk. Pitch day back on the road this weekend, continuing MIAA play in St. Charles, Missouri, this time with Lindenwood, scheduled a single game on Friday, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Pitch State 10 and 10 of the MIAA right now, tied for seventh with Northeastern and Washburn. Lindenwood is seven and nine in league play in 12. Here's Pitt State baseball coach Matt Murray on the play of his team Tuesday with Newman. Well, Tom, thank you once again. Thank you for having ha- having me. And and uh, yes, yesterday was uh, 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 you know against Newman. We of course started George Brandecker on the mound. We've moved George from the weekend rotation to the midweek. Uh, to, to allow him to work on, on his secondary pitches and, and location of his fastball. And then we're able to use him, of course, on the, you know, the back end on the weekends. And so we started George, and, 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 and George did a nice job. Uh, and we followed George up with, with Cameron Fisher uh, for two and then Dustin Ulrich for two. And, and, and the, the, the nice thing about it is, and of course, Newman did a, did a nice job of, of, of getting their hits, uh, but I thought, you know, for us, anyhow, the the critical and key point for us was that we didn't walk any. But we, you know, we we only walked one guy, and uh, you know, we didn't hit anybody, and and we played, you know, for the most part, pretty clean defense behind all three pitchers. So, uh, it was it was a it was a nice uh, nice finish to to our home stand, uh, and uh, <clears throat> kind of represents hopefully what will be. A, a, uh, geared up for for the second half of the season. Yeah, we talked uh, earlier in some conversations about how the season began with so many games on the road. It was nice to get back home and, and play 10, but it was also nice to, to win eight of those games and uh, backtracking a little bit with Northeastern Oklahoma and then with Washburn, you won three out of four. So those were key MIAA series, which uh, at that point you probably needed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, Northeastern uh, is a solid, solid club and, and uh, uh, as well as, as Washburn. Uh, and winning three or four uh, against both both opponents was uh, uh, we certainly would like to win four or four. Uh, it just didn't work out that way. But uh, uh, I thought our players learned a lot about uh, about what we're going to uh, our identity and kind of how we're going to move forward. You know, for the remainder of the season. Uh, you know, in Washburn in the Washburn series, anyhow, Washburn uh, presents four really good starters. Uh, well, you know, I and, and one, you know, one of those starters, Brett Ash, is, you know, arguably the best best arm in our league, and uh, uh, you know, they're number two and three and four are, are certainly uh, good arms as well. So, I think offensively, we saw glimpses of, of better at bats, of getting deeper into counts, and 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 trying to find ways to score uh, when the wind's blowing in and you're facing facing good arms, and and so I think we we, we certainly. I think we certainly grew up a little, if, you, if that's a word, uh, uh, as a as a team, and uh, starting to get a better identity of a better feel for our identity, and and uh, uh, really really just a little more unselfish. You know, the the one game there were a couple of the, the things that stood out in, in the Washburn games, but of that nine five win, you got six runs in the eighth inning, which uh, widened that a little bit for you. But you know, and Tyler Thompson's been good for you. Throughout the course of the year, eight innings, two uh, runs in this one, nine hits, six K and a walk. But it seemed to me pretty important too that when runners got on base, he was able to to get the ground ball, and you guys turned a couple of double plays in that game, which I thought was key. 
Well, that's that's right. That is key. That is key. And Tyler did did an outstanding job, and and you know he he just um, he he he's a he's a, he's a very competitive, and um, it's the, the the really good pitchers you'll find, or I've found anyhow, that when there's runners in scoring positions, they 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 really bear down, and and make 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 tough tough pitches, and and he certainly did that. Uh, and the nice thing with Tyler is, is you know, he started and had eight innings. I think he threw 113 pitches game one on Friday. Uh, we get into game four on Sunday, and he's on one day rest. And he visits with the coaching staff and said, you know, I, 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 my arm feels great. I'll be good for one or two if, if you need. And, you know, that's a senior uh, uh senior that, that is, is willing to, to, to compete and, 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 and do whatever he can to help our club continue to get better and win. Well, he threw three and he just struck out six. So I don't know, <laughs> yeah. you know, how many are, are your pitchers out of pitch count coach? Well, absolutely. And, and 113 is, uh, you know, is, is, you know, 113 would probably get them to 100, you know, 15, 20 this time of the year. Uh, but to come back like that is not something that, that we'll get, you know, that we'll do very often. Uh, Tyler's just kind of a, kind of a different, different breed, I guess you'd say. And, it really didn't even cross our minds until he approached us, um, and so um, you know, you, once again, you just don't see that very often. You know, I, I, I remember doing that in high school. You know, when yeah. I was down in high school and we were getting a state tournament. <clears throat> we throw our number one, and then uh, you know, a day rest, and then he might throw that next, you know, start that 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 next day. Uh, but I haven't seen it so much. You know, it, you know, at least during the regular season. You, you might catch something like that in the postseason at the collegiate level, uh, but he's just uh, that's his arm is, is resilient and uh, uh, he just he's competitive and and certainly is in, his arms in great shape and and uh, he'll be ready to go on Friday. The other part about that is it's, it's a completely different mentality, knowing that you're going to start than someone that's coming out of the bullpen. No, that's, it is a different mentality. And you know certainly Tyler has, has, uh, has you know has just started for us, uh, but I think he I think he has done this in the past, and I know he has. And, and when he was at out of high school, he went to to, to Jeffco uh, Jefferson Community College in St. Louis, and and uh, he kind of uh, they used him kind of in a similar fashion in junior college. Uh, so this is something he's kind of built up and has done in the past, and so his mindset I don't think. Uh, uh, was you know too 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 disturbed or any of that nature. He was he he came in. That's right. He came in, uh, uh, and I think he I think he struck out the first three hitters he faced. Uh, you know, in that first inning, and I believe that it, that was the eleventh inning maybe there uh, that he came in. So he was uh, he was ready to go. Tom Van Oy visiting with Matt Murray, Pitt State baseball coach, and that was the final game of uh, four with Washburn and. And Pitt State wins at 5-4 in 13. If people don't know how that game ended, I mean, <laughs> you always talk about baseball. And what you love about baseball is you can go to the ballpark and maybe see something you've never seen before. And, and I know you've done this well, but have you ever seen a game end on a, a wild pitch on, on an intentional walk? And that's what happened in your ball game as your team won. That's right, Tom. I mean, we had runners at second and third with one out. And Brad Foss, our three-hole hitter, uh, arguably one of the top hitters in our league, uh, and and that was an appropriate move on Washburn's behalf uh, to to kind of pattern four or intentionally walk Brad to get the bases loaded, uh, even though Cody Ball is coming up, who's a really been hitting it well for us. Uh, you know, you load the bases with one out and, and try to get your ground ball there and double play. So the the, the decision was was correct, uh, and so in a situation is is uh, it was a you know pattern four intentional walk and on the fourth one and just got away from the catcher and uh, uh, our runner thankfully at third Andrew Crowley was uh, was not surprised uh, we asked our players not to be surprised with ball and dirt and uh, and he was able to score there I haven't seen it none of our players personally have seen that live now one of our coaches uh, Jake Dollar uh, is a grad assistant for us and works with our pitchers he was at Kansas State last year, and uh, he made note that that's how they clinched the Big 12 season championship last year versus wow. Oklahoma. Yeah, in Manhattan, 
Uh, so he, he was the only one in the ballpark, at least on our side, that had been a part of something like that. Um, and so it was a, it was a, certainly an interesting way to, to, to finish a game, and, and our players were uh, thrilled and excited, and, and, uh, and, and so was our, I felt like our fans and our coaching staff. Is it difficult uh, for, for pitchers, and I don't know if it's specific pitchers, to, to uh, intentionally walk somebody when they're geared to throwing strikes or at least throwing something that looks, looks like a strike? <laughs> do you practice that, or is it difficult to do? And Well, you know, gosh, Tom, it, it, it is something that some, some programs will practice. Um, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't, couldn't speak on behalf of Washburn. Um, you know, I think it's something that we, we, have, we have worked on a little bit during the fall. I don't know that something you know that we work on yeah. quite a, quite often, uh, but it does. It's a reminder that we need to continue to work on it because it is a, it is a little different rhythm, a little different tempo. Uh, you're obviously waiting for the catcher to step out uh, to to hit him, you know, hit him in the chest. There, uh, I've noted that you know sometimes when we're our pitchers are just you know we're going through our first and third defense or you know they might be just kind of a 60, 70 percent to the to the plate against a, a bunt situation in practice, and and they'll 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 sell it. You know, it's just a uh, airmail type deal, and so uh, I, I can see where it could it could happen. I really do. Obviously, it did, but uh, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a good reminder for us to to continue to work on that. Well, let me ask you about this because you and I visited a little bit earlier today, and I know you visited with Dan Wilkes about this, but I mm-hmm. broadcast a Pitt State Central Missouri game back in the day, so to speak, let's say. And, and the Pitt State catcher stepped out, gave the hand out, and you're going to walk him. The batter never looked back, and the pitch was too close, and the guy hit a three-run home run to right, to right field. Uh, I, is that something? I mean, your your hitters are they uh, aware of that? And I, I guess you got to make sure you get it far enough outside too. Well, that's right. That's right. I I would have I would imagine Brad was 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 prepared, uh, Foss in that situation. Yeah. I I have to be up front with you. I was I was on deck visiting with Cody Ball uh, during that during that time, and uh, you know, thankfully. Uh, Andrew was was aware and 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 scored there. I was, we were, Cody and I were just talking about trying to make sure we get a pitch elevated and and uh, you know work through the middle of the yard for and you know, we try to basically just stay out of the double play there with the ground ball and, and look up and <laughs> here comes Andrew you know like a like a deer down the line and and uh, slid in safe. So I, I think Brad would have would have. You know, I hate to speak for him, but I think he would have been prepared for that if it did bleed over the middle or something. But mm-hmm. that, uh, yes, Dan did. Dan did mention to me that that took place several years ago. Yeah, you, you never know. So that was a good one, but a great way to finish up with Washington. But the game prior to that, uh, after you you played that second game on Saturday in the doubleheader and had a couple of issues with errors, Washington mm-hmm. won that one four one. But We've talked uh, too before about the development of of Cord Lesmeister, and he came back and gave you a, a three nothing complete game two hit uh, shutout in that third game, which I thought was important for your team as well. Oh, outstanding! Yeah, and really in game two, Nate Nate pitched well. We just um, once again we just we got pressured a little bit. We didn't communicate very well in the bunt game, and that's what happens. And we were facing a really good arm in Brett Ash. Uh, I, I truly feel like if we clean up our defense there. And keep it, you know, a one-one. Then we're able to operate a little bit differently in the sixth or seventh when we had it set up. I think it was a six to win that game, two to one. But uh, we didn't, and hopefully learn from it. And then Court, uh, as a freshman, came in. He, you know, he does, he just doesn't have a, much of a heart rate, really. He just he just gets on the mound and goes. He's a very intelligent player, very intelligent person overall. And he, uh, you're right. He threw seven innings, I think. Two hit, maybe three hit um, shutout. Uh, and gosh, Tom, we followed that up with another freshman on Sunday, a uh, local player out of Frontenac who was part of a tremendous success at Frontenac, won a state championship, and and that was his first collegiate start, Matt Stanley's. And uh, we got him into the fifth, and he, uh, you know, gave up a leadoff walk and a, another walk there, and the uh, guy hit a double behind it, but. For the most part, it was it was it was it was it was okay. It was okay, and I, we think that Matt will continue to get better. 
So looking forward, I think this weekend, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have two freshmen starting on the mound for us. 25 games in, how do you feel about your team? Well, much better, much better after this last, yeah. <laughs> last 10, much better after the last 10. Uh, I think our, I think our, our, I feel like our pitchers, which is our first priority, uh, they're, they're competing uh, much better than what they were uh, in the strike zone. Um, uh, they're able to throw a second pitch, some, some occasion a third pitch for a strike. Uh, so that's where it starts. So that's been much better. Um, our defense uh, is, is, is still continuing to get better. Uh, we're still learning different things, uh, first and third plays, bunt coverage plays that we need to continue to practice. And then offensively, you know, we've seen glimpses of it throughout the course of the fall and early in the spring. And, you know, this, this past weekend and certainly yesterday, our players are, are, uh, are doing a much better job of slowing their at-bats down. They have a better awareness, better better approach, uh, and so we're really excited about the second half of the season. And and I think uh, I think that's you know a sign of a of a good club as you just continue to grow and continue to to learn from different things and stay positive and and encourage one another. And uh, uh, we're excited about the second half. How do you feel about uh, the series coming up on the road at Lindenwood this weekend? Well, gosh, Tom, we're excited. You know, we, we, we leave out uh, today is our, our scheduled off day, uh, and tomorrow we'll leave out for St. Louis at 2.30. Uh, we play a Friday 4 o'clock game, uh, Saturday doubleheader at 1 o'clock, uh, Sunday uh, single game at noon. Uh, you know, and, and, and Linwood's going to be a, a terrific club. Uh, you know, they're going to start two, maybe three left-handers on the weekend, and uh, – which will make it makes it hard on anyone, uh, but uh, I know that our players are excited about continuing to get better, and uh, uh, so we're we're excited to go. That's Pitt State baseball coach Matt Murray on this edition of the PSU Baseball Insider Show. The Gorillas do go back on the road this weekend for more MIAA games in St. Charles, Missouri, with Lindenwood. A single game on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, and finish with one on Sunday before coming home to play five straight games. Lindenwood, 7-9 of the MIAA at this point in 12th right now. Pitt State has mentioned 10-10 and 10 in conference play, a tie for seven. I'm Tom Van Hoy. Tom Van Hoy. Tom Van Hoy.